Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 20th of October of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And the most important updates, as usually these days, are coming from Avdiivka area. Today we have a lot of very interesting geolocations, very lots of very interesting videos that explains the current situation on the ground. And before we start, I would like to discuss with you one thing. A lot of people try to compare Avdiivka with Bakhmut, trying to see some common things. A lot of people are trying to, are saying that there is nothing common between Avdiivka and Bakhmut. If you want to hear my opinion, I would like to, I would like to tell you that uh, Avdiivka and Bakhmut are completely two different operations and uh, of course it's different towns and so on but the most important difference between Avdiivka and Bakhmut is that to capture Bakhmut the Russians needed to encircle the city to establish fire control over the support roads to uh, create operational encirclement to capture Klishchevka to cross the railways to uh, capture Solidar to fight for Paraskovivka, to cross a lot of rivers. There were a lot of operations to capture Avdiivka, to capture, not Avdiivka, to capture Bakhmut, to capture the Western stronghold like uh, Domino and many, many other front fortifications on the front lines. And when talking about Avdiivka, now, from one side, this is uh, from one side. This is one of the most powerful fortification area in on the entire uh, combat line in the special military operation. But from the other side, if you want to capture Avdiivka, you need to do one thing, just one thing. And we are talking about uh, this area, about the waste heap, or how the Russians call this territory, Terikon. So I'm talking about this Terikon or waste heap. And who controls waste heap, controls the entire Avdiivka and controls the battle. And currently the most fierce and the most heavy and bloody clashes are taking place exactly in this area. This is not something like fortification that you can establish your positions or you can uh, do whatever you like or I don't know what, uh, what things the military forces can do on such a f uh, kind of waste heap. The thing that I understand that from this territory the Russians can control everything. They can control the movements of the Ukrainian forces in Avdiivka. They can see the, they can uh, establish the physical control and fire control of the supply roads that goes inside of Avdiivka through Lastochkina and through Orlovka. So just this thing. And when the and when talking about Avdiivka, the Russians needed to establish control over a lot of things like railways, Solidar, uh, coal mines, salt mines, and many many other things. When talking about Avdiivka, you need to take under control just one place, this area. Waste heap or by the Russians, Terikon. And currently, the most fierce clashes are taking place exactly in the north direction. And this is the reason why the Ukrainians are sending more and more forces in direction of the Terikon, trying not to allow the Russians to capture this territory. The, Rus the Ukrainians have already redeployed significant number of forces. They have sent significant number of reserves. And currently, on this direction, we can find the forces like very old and 110th brigade uh, who uh, stands in this area since the beginning probably of the special military operation recently the ukrainians have redeployed 129th territory defense brigade this is like very new one and very fresh one also we can find here 116th defense brigade we can find 31st mechanized brigade from strategical reserves who were took took off from um, zaporozhye and vrimivka direction and was redeployed in this direction we have 53rd brigade who's who stands here with the 110s probably since the beginning of this operation. So there are a lot of Ukrainian forces and they continue bringing more and more. And from one side we can say what's about this Turicon, this is nothing, just few square meters, but these few square meters will determine the entire situation in this area. And according to information we have as a result of another bloody operation, really bloody operation, as a result of another massacre, as a result of another meat grinder, the Russians managed to establish control for the, over the Terricon for the second time in a row. The first time, the first update of this Terricon we got on the 12th of September, of October, as a result of clashes, the Russians managed to force the Ukrainians to step back and they controlled this Terricon just for one maybe day or maybe a few hours, I don't know, but later the Ukrainians managed to concentrate forces and launch a counter-offensive that, and as a result of those counter-offensives, the, the Russians were forced to step back. After that, the Russians made few attempts 
attempts to capture this territory, but uh, all their attempts uh, fail, and just on the 20th and 19th and 20th of October, just during the previous two days, the Russians managed to concentrate forces one more time, and as a result of a very bloody operation, they managed to capture this territory. And this is the reason probably why Putin arrived today, because he, we saw the, the videos, the pictures of significant of destroyed Russian armored vehicles. For example, today, so the Russians paid a very big price for this area, significantly big price, and maybe even more than Ukrainians paid for the few first few days of clashes for Robotina. A lot of armored vehicles, some sorts are saying about uh, hundreds of armored vehicles, some sorts are saying just about a few dozens and so on. But today the Ukrainians, for example, published another video, another episode of Russian attack in direction of the railways. That was the secondary attack trying to, the Russians were trying to force the Ukrainians to to, uh, like to change their focus in this area to concentrate forces in this area not to allow the Russians to get Berdych and Stipova, just railways but uh, as you can see concentration of Russian forces at one point, there are a lot of minefields, a lot of mines and like the Russian vehicles were just were destroying one by one like one after another a lot of tanks managed to get the line but also a lot, most of them were destroyed on the minefields so that was a very bloody day, the Ukrainians published a lot of videos of the results of those attacks, so that was an epic failure. But that attack has uh, di didn't have uh, the purposes to penetrate the Ukrainian defense belt and to get Berdych and to get Kyiv from this line. Obviously, the purpose of that attack was to not to allow the Ukrainians to counterattack against the uh, waste heap Terikon. So th this is the situation in this area and. Uh, as a result, the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation, for example, today reported that as a result of clashes on the Nez direction during the previous week, the Ukrainians lost up to 2,000 soldiers. Significant number of losses, much higher in comparison with the previous week. For example, the previous week, the Ukrainians lost just 1,580, so almost up to one battalion more losses during the previous week in comparison to the week before. Uh, when talking about other updates on this direction, the Ukrainians try to slow down the Russians with all types of weapons they have. For example, in this video we see how the Ukrainians use javelin against the Russian armored vehicle somewhere in the vicinity of Visola. And as a result of that attack, uh, that armored vehicle of Russian federal forces was damaged but not destroyed, which is also very important. A little bit to the north in the vicinity of Novobahut, Muhtovka, in the area of the main logistic, uh, ter uh, sector the Ukrainians uh, bombed and attacked the Russian forces with FPV drones with all types of weapon they have trying to suppress the Russian uh, artillery systems and not allow the Russians to support their offensive forces during the battle for Terekon, Stipovo, Berdych and uh, the railway uh, and the railways. When talking about southern direction we also got a lot of updates from this area. We have like a video from the um, south of Donetsk uh, f but uh, I believe that this video is old. Or the author of this video claims that the Russians were bombing and attacking the machine gun position in the south of Avdiivka. But uh, as I understand, this is the old video because a few days ago we got an update video how the Russians were storming these positions, and as a result of another assault operation, that machine gun position was captured by the Russian forces. So as I understand, this is just like the video of uh, like previous days clashes. Interesting updates are coming from Vadiana area. The Russians also tried to attack in this direction, tried to concentrate forces uh, to make something like fake attacks, trying to also force the Ukrainians to move their, their reserves in this area. They're trying to stretch the Ukrainian uh, forces, their reserves, but for now, all those attacks also were too bloody. The, the Russians lost also significant number of forces. For example, on this area we got a video how the Russians were trying to redeploy the TOS flamethrower systems as close as possible to the combat line. You know that TOS flamethrower systems currently the most powerful weapon on the ground. And the, they can destroy like lots of manpower of the enemy with just one attack. But the only problem and the only negative side of this system is that this is low range system, just around 6 kilometers. So you need to move the TOS flame, flamethrower system as close as possible to the combat line. And this entire area uh, above Donetsk is under complete Ukrainian FPV drone control. And at one like uh, in one day, uh, so these days when there was offensive operation, the Russians sent the TOS flamethrower system fully loaded and as a result of FPV drone strike the entire machine and armored vehicle was destroyed. So 
is understand the Russians were planning to uh, send the system uh, to Vadiana, let's say, in this area. And uh, from these positions, the Russians were planning to attack the cities like Severna and uh, the cities like Toninka to, let's say, to ease the Russian further progress in these northern directions. But as you can see, without any success. Uh, furthermore, the, Rus the Ukrainians established drone control over the Russian positions in the vicinity of uh, Navadyan in, in Piromaiska. Today, the, the, the Ukrainians were flying above this territory and just were hunting the Russian forces and the Russian infantry in this area. So very heavy clashes, but uh, the only positive like uh, side the only positive benefit that the russians managed to achieve is to capture the uh less the steric on but one more time yet we haven't received even a single video confirmation of russian forces on on that uh, on that area so maybe uh those um, rumors and talks about capturing of this territory also a part of speculation and propaganda so we can we we need to think that there are very high chances that this is exactly like this uh, there are very heavy clashes uh, took place in the vicinity of Marinka. the russians also launched a, a storm operation against Krasnogorovka. Uh, we discussed uh, that operation also many times and the russians made uh, were very concentrated against Krasnogorov on Krasnogorovka during the previous months as they were trying to bomb every single tank anti-tank position the Russians were attacking the Ukrainian forces artillery systems and so on and basically the Russians finished the artillery preparation and today they launched an offensive operation not maybe today maybe these days today yesterday and um, as a result of that attack the Russians also were defeated at least uh, all these videos were published by the Ukrainian forces and it's very difficult to make a conclusions based on the Ukrainian video because obviously the Ukrainians try to show just the losses among the Russian forces, their soldiers, armored vehicles and so on. Maybe the Russians managed to achieve significant success but during the during that attack they lost a lot of armored vehicles and this is the only thing that the Ukrainians published. But anyway as a result of the attack we see that at least three armored vehicles were abandoned or even damaged in this area and yet we don't have any updates regarding Regarding the Russian results on the south of Krasnogorovka. So another attack to force the Ukrainians to stretch the reserves and to take the reserves from other position. But yet, uh, when talking about Krasnogorovka, Vadyana, Pesky, Perlomaiska, Toninka, Avdeevka, the Russians haven't met a real Ukrainian forces. The only thing the Russians are fighting with is minefields. So basically, the Russians are in the same situation that the Ukrainians was when they start the offensive operation direction of Robotina. Basically, the Russians currently try to are demining and clearing the fields uh, with their own armored vehicles. So they're moving on the um, like minefields. They're just uh, they're like uh, mines are destroyed, uh, like their explosions, and uh, that's it. No, no preparation for those attacks. When talking about uh, Nova Mikhailov, come today we got South Donetsk direction. Today we got very interesting updates. First of all, that we need to mention is that the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces in in the fields between Ugledar and Nova Mikhailovka. On this video, we see another episode of clashes and of artillery duels of dra uh, bomb dra bombings of, of from FPV drones. We see that the Russians are pretty concentrated in this area. Uh, this area have already passed two phases uh, of uh, uh, preparation. There was artillery preparation, currently we see drone preparation. So I expect very soon that maybe the Russians will try their luck in this direction and will attack these positions with tanks as well, with armored vehicles. But uh, now we see that the Russians have already lost a lot of armored vehicles. And the question is, do they have, can they support a lot of attempts to attack on many directions? Have they pre prepared for these operations? and have they managed to include all these losses into their like common calculation of uh, the losses uh, on this phase of offensive operation when talking about Nova Mikhailovka today we got also very interesting video uh, the Russians published the video how they were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions with 240 millimeters rounds uh, this is not just like 240 millimeters rounds this is very powerful one as you can see according to the caliber and the most important that these rounds are using using for 
uh, for fortifications to destroy and ruin fortifications and the russian sources are saying that this is not just regular rounds this is like guided and accurate rounds by the name of smilchak so very important update very important achievement if the russians have this type of weapon because with this type of weapon they can destroy like accurately every single like fortification and stronghold of the ukrainians on this direction on, on any direction when talking about south Donetsk direction the russians reported that as a result of clashes the ukrainians lost 1000 soldiers the previous time the, Ukrainian, the russians report about 1200 losses so as you can see there is some kind of reduce of intensifying of action mainly because of complete absence of any clashes on on vrimiv tactical bridgehead neither the russians nor the ukrainians made any attempts to attack each other so completely silent and stable situation when talking about the Porozhye area, uh, we got just a few updates. Uh, the, the most important one is that the sources on the ground are saying that the Ukrainians c concentrated forces and launched another offensive operation and that the like pressure, uh, the level of pressure um, is bigger in comparison with the previous week, like 10 times, 10 times bigger. So something very big is going to happen probably, or maybe this is something like reconnaissance and force from the Ukrainian side, and they tried to force the Russians to send some reserves in this area and not to allow the Ukrainians to penetrate the defense belt. Because uh, one more time, the most important battle is for Avdiivka right now. Putin visited the headquarters, uh, Zaluzhny visited Avdiivka. Everybody understand that uh, nobody is going to step back, neither the Russians nor the Ukrainians. And this battle is going to determine the entire situation on the combat line, not even for this year, but for the next year as well. And every single other clashes, bombings on any other direction has the secondary meaning, uh, has no purpose and has no value, at least at this stage of the special military operation. Uh, when talking about Kherson direction, today we got also a lot of updates from this territory. The Russians continue bombing after small operational pause the cities like Adrada Kamyanka and so as you can see the bombardments are very heavy and the main purpose of uh, these bombardments is to reduce the Ukrainian forces and not to allow them to concentrate forces for further sending their forces on the Russian bank of Dnipro river because as we know uh, during as a result of clashes and uh, the forcing crossing the Dnipro river operation that Ukrainians started yesterday they managed to establish control over few blocks or maybe buildings inside the village by the name of Krynki. This is the village I'm talking about as you can see I have already updated the map and it's very difficult to understand where exactly the Ukrainians have their foothold. Obviously the Ukrainians are not attacking the Russian area from this area because highly unlikely they can cross this territory being invisible and the only solution the only possible solution for the Ukrainians I see is that they're using boats and they're moving along this river this small river and they're getting and they're trying to stick too close as close as possible to the river and basically this is the only territory they have under their control and they also have like a very short access to the river that they can use for let's say retreating and withdraw their position so the thing that they're trying to do right now is to hold the foothold and if they're able to hold this uh, foothold as long as possible then they will send more and more reserves in this direction we have already, we have already discussed this video uh, one more time the most important part of this video is that the village is almost reduced to ruins the combat line is very far, fly, far from this territory but we see that the Russians or uh, that the Ukrainians attacked this territory heavily before they launch an attack so very interesting thing and I would like to get explanation why the city is destroyed because and during the previous weeks we don't we haven't received nothing from this territory that can tell us about some artillery preparation or artillery strikes against this territory the russians for example reported that as a result of clashes on Kherson direction the ukrainians lost 345 soldiers 20 people more in comparison with the previous week furthermore the uh, russian sources reported that the ukrainians established anti-retreat forces on the line between Nov Novotyaginka, Ivanovka and Tyaginka. So in this area there are like anti-retreat forces and the main purpose is to attack every single boat of the Ukrainian forces who try to step back or who want, who uh, is not are not going to follow the Ukrainian orders. So they're sending on this bank and they're attacking everything that try to retreat. So the Ukrainians as you can see uh, prepared themselves for this operation and the Russians haven't managed to force the Ukrainians to step back from this territory the only thing the Russians do is they're attacking this territory with artillery so as I understand the 
the battle for this foothold is going to continue. When talking about classic Kherson direction, there are also very heavy clashes, bombardments and attacks of the Ukrainian positions on the Ukrainian bank of the river. Furthermore, the Russians continue destroying the Ukrainian boats that Ukrainians use for sending reserves, reinforcements and some support to the Russian bank of the river. So currently this is the main the priority target for the Russians to destroy boats. If there are no boats, that means that there are no like uh, possibilities to support Ukrainian forces. If there are no possibilities to support Ukrainian forces, then the battle of, uh, let's say, uh, Russian bank of the river lost by the Ukrainians, of course. When talking about Kupensk and Liman front lines, there are no changes on the ground, there are no changes in this area. Uh, about Bakhmut, few things about Bakhmut. The Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces. We don't see any updates, any icons from the Ukrainian side, which means that they took a decision to redeploy all their forces in direction of Avdiivka or let's say in the direction of Kupensk because first of all they don't need the forces here because they're not planning to attack and they see the risks of, uh, of losing their positions on other front lines, so everyth everything they can take from this area, they move to Avdiivka, to Kupensk and to Liman. The only thing that left here um, uh, is destroying uh, by the Russians every single day. For example, on this video we see uh, how the Ukrainians lost another helicopter in the vicinity of Ivanovska. The Ukrainian helicopter got too close to the combat line and as a result of air defense system the Ukrainians lost uh, like the machine. Furthermore, the Russians published a very interesting video of FPV drone strike, of Lancet strike. Uh, as a result of reconnaissance operation the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian vampire and as a result of Lancet strike with AI as technologies uh, this uh, machine was destroyed. The Russians used a very interesting AI technology and they before the strike the Russian uh, Lancet uh, captured the target and not to lose the target if there are some problems with the connections, communication or if the Ukrainians start using like electronic warfare. So AI allows the uh, Lancet to concentrate on target and not to lose it when there is like lots of like barriers, electronic barriers and something like this. Uh, when talking about um, Liman frontline in Kupensk, we got some videos and details from um, Orlovka direction. There are very fierce clashes in this area. The Ukrainians published few videos how they were using FPV drones to bomb the Russian forces in this area, which confirms the Russian progress and that the Russians managed to establish control over more uh, trenches and fortifications closer to in deep inside of Kupinsk area. And uh, both sides, either the Russians and the Ukrainians, published the video of tank duel also on this line. Uh, first, there was a Russian tank who started its movement and after the Russian tank got the tree line in the middle in, of this area, the Russians started bombing and attacking the Ukrainian position forces in front of them. You see the Russian tanks attacking. After the Russian tank uh, used the entire like magazine, the Russians turned back and started like retreating. Then the Ukrainian tank arrived in the same area, but the Ukrainian tank wasn't, wasn't so successful as the Russian one. And at some point the tank was either damaged by the Russian tank or maybe the tank got on minefield and basically was destroyed. So that was the result of a duel on this direction. The Russians continue advancing in this area and the Minister of Defense reported that as a result of clashes on Kupin's direction during the previous week, the Ukrainians lost uh, 995 soldiers. The last time the Russians reported about 830 losses. So we see that the level of losses of Ukrainian forces increased in comparison with the previous week and we, as we understand there is like a real intensifying of clashes uh, on the line between Sinkovka and Kislovka Katlarovka. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.